Welcome to the Word of Life Center podcast. It's our desire that today's message would equip and empower you to see the Word of God bring life to your life. I started, uh, uh, actually had been praying about some things, and the Lord just dropped some things in my heart uh, about the kingdom of God. And um, I, I shared Wednesday night a little bit about this, and I just felt like the Lord wanted me to kind of jump back in today. And we, we talked about Wednesday night about Daniel, and, and Daniel interpreted a dream for Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was a ruler of the world. He was the man. In fact, he was so much a man, he thought he was the only one, and that he did everything he did himself, and um, that he was, he was who he was because of himself, and wanted to be a God, which he wasn't. Amen. So God just cut him down a notch or two. He, he really showed him in a dream, and then Daniel interpreted the dream, that bottom line, you're going to end up eating grass like an animal. Until you understand and you learn one thing, Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to have to understand that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. That heaven rules. Well, Nebuchadnezzar, for seven years, was an animal. Said his fingernails grow out long as hair. He was was an animal. But then he came to his senses. And you know what the first thing he said when he came to his senses? Heaven rules. Heaven rules. Heaven rules in the kingdom of men. Now, the reason I wanted to start with that is this. You need to understand something very clearly. Okay? There are really three kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God. There's the kingdom of men. And there's the kingdom of darkness. And I just want to tell you right now, heaven rules. Okay? Heaven rules. Heaven rules. So don't fret about what's going on in the world. Don't get all upset about it. Don't get mad at a president or don't get mad at somebody because of something. Just trust this. Heaven rules. And this thing's going to turn out just like God said it is. And, And you're just going to have to learn how to operate in the kingdom of God in the meantime. Jesus taught this uh, about the kingdom in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. This is very familiar to you, but listen to what it says. Jesus was teaching them how to pray. He said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now listen to this. Hallowed be your name. Now listen to this next verse. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those, uh, forgive, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Don't lead us into temptation. Now listen to this. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Now see, you're thinking, well, yeah, that's right. God, it's his kingdom. God, yeah, power. Yay, God. Which is good. There's nothing wrong with that, but you need to understand how the kingdom of God operates on the earth. Because the kingdom of God's not just in heaven, folks. Okay? Jesus said, pray that the kingdom comes, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's a divine connection now because of Jesus, and you need to understand what God wants to do in your place. The bottom line is kingdom first. God's kingdom first. Now, I don't want you to have to go eating grass for seven years, you know, and not know your own names to figure out that heaven rules, that God's kingdom is in authority. It's first. Amen. You know, I'm just kidding, right? I don't think God would do that to you, but. But I'll talk about being proud some other time. But here's the thing you've got to understand, okay? And Jesus spelled it out so clear for us. And this is what I want to share with you today. Listen to what it says in Luke chapter 17, beginning in verse 20. Notice notice the terminology here. It says, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom would come, 
He answered them and said, now, so you got it? He is answering them. He's telling them when the kingdom's coming. Okay, so listen to what he said. The kingdom of God does not come with observation. You can't see it with your visible eyes. Nor will they say, here it is, there it is. For the kingdom indeed, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Now listen to me today. Okay, You've got to understand this. If you're a child of God, the kingdom of God dwells in you. The authority of God dwells in you. The world doesn't understand it. The world doesn't see it because it doesn't come by observation. But if you understand that Jesus said that the kingdom comes in you, then you're going to be able to understand how God wants to use you to communicate the kingdom to others. Because the world doesn't understand you. Did you know that? They don't understand you. They don't understand a Christian. They don't get it. You know why? Because the kingdom's not in them. What's your goal? To get the kingdom in them. Your goal is to get them to see and to understand the way God wants them to see and understand. Jesus put it very clearly in John chapter 3, in verse 3. Listen to this. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus said, now listen to this. This is really important that you hear this. I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You can never explain somebody into the kingdom. You can't even explain the virgin birth to somebody. I have a missionary friend who got um, captured by some, some Muslims in um, Syria. And um, they, they, they were not really captured. They were really just kind of forced to go see the imam that was there. And so this Iman walks in and he won't, he's, going, he's, going, he's mocking them. You're telling me that some woman gave birth by God and she was a virgin and there was a son born from that, that, you know, that relationship, you know, just really actually used pretty flowering words, you know, about it all. Calling Mary things you don't want to say in church. So, so. He didn't understand the kingdom. You can talk about that, but you can't understand it with your head. But the moment you're born again, you understand it. You can't explain it, but you understand it. You can understand how God has a son, but there's no mother. Well, Mary carried him, but, it, but I'm talking about he was before that, right? So, but the point is, once you make Jesus the Lord of your life, it all comes clear. You understand the kingdom. Now, you may not understand all the nuances of the kingdom. You might understand this church building, but I bet you there are rooms you can't find until you look for them. But if you, if you looked up from the outside of this building and said, hey, I go to that church. Well, great. Well, show me where the mechanical room is. Oh, well, I don't know where that is. That's just because you hadn't learned the kingdom. You hadn't learned that part of the church. But see, once you make Jesus the Lord of your life, there's nothing hidden. You can learn everything. You can know everything. Why? Because it says when you are born again, then you can understand the kingdom, you can see the kingdom of God, know how it operates. Listen, I experienced this in such a dramatic way myself because I wasn't a church guy before I got saved. You know, a lot of people, they're church people, so they know the lingo and they've been around church and maybe, you know, but they never just really made a commitment to Jesus. But, but I only went when I had to go. And I've told this story a lot of times, but my mother would drop me off at the front door. She didn't go to church, but she thought I ought to go. 
So she dropped me off at the front door of the First Baptist Church in Centerville, Mississippi. I'd go in the front door, walk down the aisle, walk out the back door, and go visit a friend. And, you know, the Baptists, you, you can pretty much time them. You know, they're going to be out at noon. Amen. <laughs> Not mocking the Baptists, I'm just saying. And, and so just a little bit before noon, I said, well, I got to go. And so just as they're singing, just as I am, I walk in the back door. And when they dismiss, I just walk out with everybody else and shake the preacher's hand. And my mother's waiting for me. I don't know why I told that, but anyway, I'm telling on myself. But the, back, but the funny thing about it is I told that story in this church. My mother, when she was alive, was here, and she almost fell out. Of the, we had pews then. She almost fell out of the pew because I never told her that. My point is that I, I didn't understand because I didn't know anything about the kingdom. So I didn't know. I didn't understand anything about the kingdom. But the most amazing thing to me was, I got, when I got saved, when I was born again, October the 17th, 1974, that, the very next day, everything was clear. I didn't understand every nuance, but I understood God. I understood Jesus. I understood the Holy Spirit. I understood what Jesus came to do. And I don't mean in my head. I mean, it was in my heart. Why? Because I was born again. And when you're born again, you understand the kingdom. You can't explain the kingdom to somebody. You've just got to tell them about the one who can bring it to them. And his name is Jesus. Let me read you another scripture. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Listen to this. It says, when they'd come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel. In other words, they thought, sure enough, Jesus is going to right now establish the kingdom, make Israel the main, main uh, uh, government in the world, and he was going to sit on the throne. But isn't it interesting? Jesus said this to them. He said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but... You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. In other words, you're not going to know when it's going to happen. But in the meantime, my Holy Spirit is going to dwell in you so you can understand and know the things of the kingdom. I'm not going to send you and leave you down there without understanding. I'm going to send my Holy Spirit from heaven to come so we can communicate. So even though you're on the earth and God's in heaven and Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, you're part of the kingdom. You're just living in a foreign land right now. You know, the Bible says we're citizens of heaven. We're living here, but we're citizens of heaven. So if you understand that and get a, a, an understanding of that, that God's kingdom resides on the inside of the believer... It gives you a different way to live your life. So here's my question. Do you see yourself different than the world? Or do you, do you approach life just like everybody else? See, if you're a kingdom person, if the kingdom of God is in you, if you are born of God, then you don't see things the way the world does. You don't respond the way the world does. You don't act the way the world does. When I say the world, you know people that aren't saved. You have a different perspective. You have a different arsenal of equipment. You live a different way, a different life. Over in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it talks about the fact that we, we live normal lives as people, but our warfare is different. We, we use different Things against the enemies. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the devil. Which you don't know. You don't get that either if you're not in the kingdom. <laughs> How would you like to know the devil's beating you over the head and all the while you didn't even know it was the devil? I, I, that's how I live my life. I tell you, the devil pushed me here, pushed me there, motivated me by my lust and drew, drew, drew me here, and pushed me there. Didn't even realize it was a devil. Thought I was just doing it myself. 
The whole time it was an enemy. You know what? When I got saved and I felt those tugs and those pushes, I realized, wait a minute, that ain't, that's the devil. I'm not going to live like that. I'm not going, I don't have to live that way. The kingdom of God's on the inside of me. God's given me power to live in the kingdom now. God living in you means your life will look different as it's lived out in the world. God didn't tell us we're to separate ourselves from the world. He said, you just live different. You have a different way of living. And listen, here's the thing. Let me, let me explain it to you this way, okay? Because the key to this is in the word kingdom. Now, you know, we know what an English version is, but this was written in Greek. So if you go back to the Greek, you can understand exactly what it means. And this word means, number one, it means royalty. But it also means, now listen to this, the foundation of power. Where are you getting your power? You get it from your intellect. You get it from your own wits. You're getting it from how you were born or what you've learned. Or, you, or is your foundation totally separate, totally different? The root word there is a word we call, we use the word basis for. It actually means the base or the footing of your life. So when it talks about the kingdom of God, that's our foundation. And I don't know whether you know it or not, but if God rules, heaven rules, and we're in his kingdom, guess what? We rule. We have authority. We have a right to speak, to declare, to live a life that's different. To expect God to work in our lives and move in our lives. Why? Because it's the base of our operation. You go through the Word of God and you'll find out. Paul wrote, and I'm not going to read this, but in Colossians 2.18, he said, Don't let somebody steal your reward. How do you get your reward stolen? By living like everybody else. Just by living like everybody else does. Well, you know, I'm going to go along, get along. Well, first of all, that never works. Eventually, you will be challenged, even in the natural world, about go along and get along. Eventually, it will lead you to destruction, or you'll have to challenge it. But the point is, you have to understand that all the while you're a child of God, you're a child of the kingdom of God, you have capacity because of that, listen to me, because of that, there's always going to be that push to try to stop you, get you off of your base, so that the enemy can try to control you. You don't have to live that way. I heard somebody say, some people, you just have to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You just got to be tired of the way life is treating you and, how, and, and find out how the kingdom of God operates and say, no, no, this is what God says. This is what the kingdom's like. Once you understand that, you start operating out of a different capacity on the inside. And it starts working out of you. Let me show you this. In a scripture, okay, in Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, verse, eight, verse 11. Listen to what it says. It, it, he's talking here. It says, now as they heard these things, now listen to this. He spake another parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. All right, now stop right there and listen to me, Okay. The people thought that when Jesus came to Jerusalem, he was going to walk into the temple, sit, walk into the Holy of Holies, declare who he was, sit on the throne, take care of Caesar, and Israel would reign. That was, that was what they thought. So Jesus had to teach them, give them a parable. Now listen to me a minute. The reason he gave parables is so they couldn't understand unless they wanted to. But here's the amazing thing about it. Once you make Jesus the Lord of your life, there is not one parable that you can read that you can't say, I know what that means. 
I know exactly. How do you know that? Well, I guess it's because I'm in the kingdom. Parables are not secrets to us. How many of you read them? Oh, yeah, I know that one. Now, some of them you might need to pray about and really hear from the Lord about. But bottom line, listen to me. Bottom line, parables are revealed the minute you read them when you're in the kingdom of God. The kingdom's been revealed to you. So let me read you this, and I'll bet you, you, if you're a Christian today, that you already know this. I'm not trying to exclude anybody, but I'm just trying to get you to see where you are. Notice this parable, verse 12. He said a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. Anybody know who they're talking about? He's talking about Jesus. Jesus went to heaven to receive his kingdom. If you don't want to know, you don't know about it, go read Hebrews chapter 2. It talks about him having the scepter of righteousness, seated at the right hand of God. He received his kingdom. Okay? Now, the last part of that, that last word is what? Return. He has not come back yet. How do you know? Because I'm still here. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm, because if he came back, he came back to get me. Why? Because that's what his word says. So Jesus paints a picture here. All right, you got it? Here's somebody, Jesus, who's going to, because of the death, burial, and resurrection, now goes to heaven, y'all still here, to receive his kingdom. To be authorized for the next step would be a good way to put it. All right. So there he is until that last word, return. Okay. All right. Now listen to the next verse. So he called 10 of his servants. Listen to me. That's you. Okay. That's you. 10 of his servants. And deliver to them ten minus, or I like the King James, it says talents. Because really that's exactly what it is. Not money, but talents. Now here it is, you ready for this? This is before the return. He's up receiving the kingdom before the return. Okay, his servants, those that are his, those that are in the kingdom of God, that's you. Okay, listen to me. Listen to what he said. He said to them, do business till I return. Don't hold the fort. Don't lock yourselves away. Don't run and hide. Do business till I come. The word actually means to occupy till I come. See, until Jesus comes back, You are his representative on this earth to take care of his business. He has given you the authority, the power, the talents, the understanding to take care of his business until he comes back. That's your job. That's who you are as a child of God. That's where the kingdom of God explodes out from you to minister to other people i like that word it says you know minus which is a a a coin but i like that word actually it's a piece of gold but but i like that word in the king james talent because it represents what you get if i had time today just to tell you all the stuff i don't want to say that in an offensive way to the lord all the great things that you have from God in you. To live a life way beyond anything you could live on your own. No way you could live this life on your own. So God said, All right, I'm going to give you gifts. I'm going to help you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you spiritual gifts. 
I'm going to give you fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to give you everything you need to live in this hostile world, not just hold on till I return, but take care of business. Take care of my business, the Lord said. Take care of my business. Once you get a revelation of that, once you begin to understand that, all of a sudden, wow, this is amazing. I talked a little bit about this um, Wednesday night, okay? Listen to me. The world has no clue about love. They might have a clue about love. You know, L-U-V, love. I love you. But they, listen to me, they don't know real love because it's deposited in you by the Holy Spirit when you enter the kingdom. It becomes your guiding force. It becomes how you live your life, how you walk, how you live, how you serve others. It's your, it, it's your guidance because He loved, you love. Not only that, listen to me, you have the grace of God. Now, see, a lot of people don't understand the grace of God. They think, well, that's, you know, I'm saved by grace. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Grace means favor. Grace means you can do what you can't do. You can do what you can't do because you're going to have God's empowerment, God's favor to do what you can't do. It's impossible to do what you're doing. I know it's the grace of God. Listen, you you might want to go read about Paul's life. He talked about how many times he was beaten, how many times he was shipwrecked, how many times he was in the water, you know, night and day, all the people that hated him, all the things that happened in his life. But you know what? He said, but God said his grace was sufficient to carry me through. Now, you couldn't handle what Paul handled. Physically, you could not handle what he handled. Mentally, you could not handle what he handled. Why? Because you don't have the grace to do it. But God has given you grace in your life. If you're a business person, you ought to have favor in your life as a business person. On your job. Listen, if you want to act like the rest of the world on your job, and complain and whine around, you're going to get exactly what everybody else gets. But if you start saying, God, thank you for favor, thank you for wisdom, I hate my job. Well, maybe you'll just be without one. No, but I tell you, if you rejoice for what you've got, you'd be surprised at what God will do for you. The grace He'll give you in your life. We had a man in our church, businessman, well, not a businessman, he was just a worker. He worked for this man in a machine shop. He'd worked for him for, it was like 25 years or long, long, maybe even longer than a long time. And this man had gotten old and and, uh, he he announced to all his employees, it wasn't a big shop, but he announced to his employees, he said, uh, well, I'm retiring and I'm going to close down the shop. So here this man is. He's fixing to be out of a job. He started saying, God, I thank you for the right job for me. I thank you for favor for me. I thank you for grace for my life, whatever it is. Just give me your favor. And he went back the next day to work, and, and his, his boss called him in the office and said, you know what? Last night I had an idea. And he said, well, he says, I'm going to give you the business. And he went from being the employee to being the employer and took over the shop and carried it on until he retired. That doesn't happen, folks. I experienced this before I went in ministry. I was saved, but I, 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 and I was learning the kingdom of God and learning how to believe God and expect God to work for me, which He wants to do. And, and, and I, was, I was a sales manager for a communications company. And so I was new on the job, and, and uh, I didn't know really, I, there were some things I didn't know about the company. If I'd have known, I probably wouldn't have gone to work for them. But I guess I did because that's where the Lord wanted me. But anyway, so my boss, the owner, said, listen, I want you to go visit this particular company. And 
and, and talk to them about their, you know, their, their, their needs, their communication needs and what we can do for them and all that. And I said, yeah, I'll be happy to do that. Yeah, I'll be glad to do that. That morning I got up, I just really felt the urge I need to pray before I went. And so I just took some time, just prayed and asked God for favor and open door. Well, what I didn't know was that the last salesman from the company I was working for that went to see them had made a mess of it. He lied to him. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. And the guy, the bottom line, the, the CEO of the company kicked him out and said, don't ever come back or your, com- or your company. And I didn't know that. But I'd been praying and asking God just for favor. So I go in there and I go to the, the, the uh, secretary's desk there and, and uh, told her who I was and the company I was with. And she said, oh. I said, I'd like to see, you know, your boss. I didn't say that, but, you know, I'd like to see the, your boss. And she didn't say yes, and she didn't say no. She said, wait a minute. So she went in, and, and a few minutes later, she came back out and said, come on in. Well, I thought that was normal. I didn't know that it was an act of God that I was even going to see the guy. So I walked in there, and I introduced myself to him, and he told me the whole story. And I said, well, that's not me. I mean, I got bold. I said, that's not me. And he didn't represent our company for what it is. And I just told him what we could do for him. And I laid out a plan for him. And you know what? I sold, I sold a communication system to his whole company. I, I didn't do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't do that. I, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not that skilled. I'm not that good. I'm not that quick on my feet. God's favor was there to get it done. Do you understand the kingdom of God? The favor that God can give you in your life? What He wants to do in your life? How He wants to work in your life? Not only just with that, but just even just with protection in your life or, or just understanding something you don't understand. It, it, it's, it's so huge what's in you when you say the kingdom of God's in you. And then Jesus said, I'm trusting you to take care of my business while I'm gone. You're in charge of my business while I'm, in go- while I'm gone. All of a sudden you realize, you know what? There may be more to this than I think. But you know, sometimes what happens is we get so, we get so caught up I guess that's the best way to say it, in life. You know, and you have needs in your life, and, and you know, you're dealing with this or that, and all struggle with different things in your life. And, and yeah, you know, Lord, I, I, need, I need a raise on my job, or I don't have money to pay my rent. Lord, I need you to help me. Oh, God, I'm in trouble. Well, you know, maybe you're not going about it the right way. Because... Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, he, I think it's verse 34, he said, seek first, no, it's not verse 34, it's uh, verse 33, seek first, what? Seek what? First, the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. Just the opposite of the way the world does it. Seek first the kingdom of God. Over, listen to me. Over in chapter 16, in verse 19, Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. That means if you want to come to Word of Life at 3 o'clock in the morning, you could walk in, turn the alarm off, and be here. All by yourself. If you had the keys. But if you've got the keys of the kingdom, that means nothing is locked for you. Nothing is stopping you. Nothing can keep you from moving into all that God has for you. Because it dwells in you. The kingdom lives in you. And all you have to do is operate by that system. It's like a computer. You might have the greatest computer in the world, but if you don't have an operating system, 
See, you don't even realize you have one. But I bet you if I took it away, you'd know. Because you just have a blank screen. But if you've got the right operating system, you'd be amazed at what God can do in your life. So let me show you how this operates. All right? Listen to me. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Listen to what it says. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. In other words, it's not what you eat, what you don't eat, all your religious duties. That's not the kingdom of God. Okay? It's not the kingdom of God. Well, what is the kingdom of God? You ready? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Oh, by the way, in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, see, a lot of people don't really get a revelation of righteousness. Because if you did, then you would never have a problem in the kingdom of God communicating kingdom-wide. You could go to heaven and talk to God. Huh? Yeah. I talked to him this morning. I went to heaven this morning. Years ago, uh, I don't know how many years ago now, four or five years ago, I was traveling and, and I was at this hotel in there. The deal, you know, the do not disturb sign you put on the outside, it had, it had written on there and showed somebody sleeping, you know. It said, I've gone to heaven. I stole it. <laughs> so now on my study, when I'm praying, I put that on my door. I've gone to heaven. That's what righteousness does for you. What does it do? It makes you right with God. Well, but you don't understand what I've done. Get over it. Ask God to forgive you. Go on. Go forward. Let me explain it to you this way. If you were just as ugly, downright ugly as you possibly could be all week long, kind of like Paul was this week moving, Just, just ugly. Listen, you could still come to church on Sunday morning and lift your hands and worship God, and He would accept your worship. Because Jesus' blood was shed to forgive you and to make you right, and He will accept you no matter what you've done. The good news is we want to learn to grow in the Lord, but the bottom line is His righteousness covers us when we aren't as good as we ought to be. It's not based on what I've done. It's not based on how good I am. Now let me just give you a little understanding here. I'm a lot better today than I was when I got saved. I, I am I am really a better person today. But it's because of God's righteousness. Because you learn and you grow. But the point is, I can't stand on this and say, Now, Lord, you know, I've been in the ministry now 40 years. I thank you that you recognize me for who I am. It has nothing to do with that. So, just a baby Christian, just got saved, has the same right as any other human who's ever made Jesus Lord of their life, to come into the presence of God, and not only to come into His presence, but to ask. Yes. Ask for what? What do you need? Yes. What do you need help with? What do you need to understand? What direction do you need? It doesn't matter because the kingdom of God dwells in you, which means you can access heaven at any point because of the righteousness that God has given us through His Son. Then, there's peace. Peace. The word there, peace, is an interesting word. It actually means calm delight. Calm delight. Now, we're not talking about happy. You can be happy one minute and sad the next. Okay? You know, you can have a happy birthday party, and the next day you realize, oh, my God, I'm a year older. <laughs> happy one minute and... It's not, it has nothing to do with happy. It has to do with peace in your soul. In fact, the word, one of the definitions for the word is soul harmony. You're at peace in your life. See, that's part of the kingdom of God. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. 
I leave it like a, a, a will. I leave my peace to you. It's yours. It belongs to you. It's called His peace. His peace. Okay? Bottom line, His peace. Then there's joy. Joy. You, you, can, be, you can be joyful. Joy is not, again, happy. Joy is when you have gladness in your heart. One translation says, calm, happy, well off. You, can you imagine the value of joy in your life? Just, just the pure value of it. Listen, James said this in James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into trials and temptations. How many of you, that, that, that is not natural? It, 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 do you or not? That is not natural. That's not natural. The, the normal person doesn't get joyful when they're in trouble. Well, it doesn't say you have to be joyful. It says count it all joy. In other words, do it anyway. Be joyful anyway. Why? Well, you have to read the next verse. Knowing. In other words, you got to know something. And that is that if you'll be patient, God will help you and deliver you out of your trouble. So your joy is based not in the fact that you feel better. It's that you know something. Then it says in the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. If you ever understand that God has deposited in you His Spirit from heaven to divinely connect you, hardwire you to heaven. No interference. Hardwired to heaven. So that whatever you need is available. It says that He, listen, He searches the deep and the profound things of God for you. For you. When you don't know how to pray, he knows how to pray. He'll pray through you. You don't even have to do it on your own. He'll pray through you in your life. All you've got to do is realize, hey, that's mine. Now, here's the most amazing thing about this scripture. Listen, listen to verse 18 with me, okay? So if you walk in righteousness, peace, and joy by the Holy Spirit, I want you to listen to this. It says, he who serves Christ in these things, all right, what things? Righteousness, peace, and joy by the Holy Spirit. If you serve Jesus in those things, listen to me, you are acceptable to God. And here's another wild thing about it. You are approved by men. Do you know that most people in the world will never get upset because you're happy? That you have joy in your life, that you have peace in your life, that you pray. I, I can't tell. I can tell you, very rarely have I ever known anybody who would not let me pray for them, or who would at least accept me praying for them at some point in time. I have had hard men. I had a man one time, hard as a brick, not serving God, just a worldly guy, I walked into, I was playing golf, I walked into the locker room and he was in there and he was telling me his trouble. I said, Can, let me pray for you. He got down on his knees and bowed his head and let me pray for him. I don't know where he got that, but I let him do it. People walking by and I'm standing there praying for him. He's on his knees. Very seldom will people ever, ever be offended by righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And it, so you're acceptable to God. God says, that's a, listen, bottom that's a thumbs up to God. That's a thumbs up to God because you're walking in the kingdom. But then men will say, you know what? You're not half bad. I know you're one of those Christians, but you've got joy in your life. You've got peace in your life. 
You, you talk to God? It's amazing how that works. We shouldn't have to always be in contention. I know you can blame the devil for all sorts of things, but it's not always the devil. Amen? Sometimes it's just life. So listen to me today, okay? Jesus said very clearly, this is, not a, uh, this is what Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Maybe you're here today and you didn't understand a word I said. I know how you feel because I've been to church and didn't understand a word they said because I wasn't saved. But the moment I got saved, I understood. Thanks for listening to the Word of Life Center podcast. You can connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at our website, wordoflifecenter.org.